story thirty seven of romance of california life by john haberton this librivox recording is in the public domain story thirty seven free speech the following is quoted by permission from mr haberton's volume the scripture club of valley rest published by g p putnam sum new york the members of the scripture club did not put off their holy interest with their sunday garments as people of the world do with most things religious when the little steamboat oakleaf started on her monday morning trip for the city the members of the scripture club might be identified by their neglect of the morning papers and their tendency to gather in small knots and engage in earnest conversation in a corner behind the paddle-box securely screened from wind and sun sat mr jotterell and mr prim the latter adoring with much solemn verbosity the sacred word and the former piling text upon text to demonstrate the final removal of all the righteous to a new state of material existence in a better ordered planet in the one rocking-chair of the cabin sat insurance president lotson praising to mr hooper who leaned obsequiously upon the back of the chair and occasionally hopped vivaciously around it the self-disregard of the disciples and the evident inability of any one within sight to follow their example the prudent wagget was interviewing dr Fahrenglotz, who was going to attend the meeting of a sort of theosophic society composed almost entirely of germans and was endeavouring to learn what points there might be in the doctor's belief which would make a man wiser unto salvation while captain mayle stood by a critical listener and distributed pitying glances between the two well forward but to the rear of the general crowd stood deacon bates in an attitude which might have seemed conservative were it not manifestly helpless mr buffle with the smile peculiar to the successful business man lawyer scott with the air of a man who had so much to say that time could not possibly suffice in which to tell it all squire woodhouse who was in search of a good market for hay principal alleman who was in chase of an overdue shipment of textbooks and mr radley who with indifferent success was filling the self-assigned role of moderator of the little assemblage nothing settled by the meeting said mr buffle echoing a despondent suggestion by deacon bates of course not you don't suppose that what theologians have been squabbling over for two thousand years can be settled in a day do you we made a beginning and that's a good half of anything why i and every other man that builds boats have been hard at work for years looking for the best model and we haven't settled the question yet we're in earnest about it we can't help but be for there's money in it and while we're waiting we do the next best thing we use the best ones we know about don't you think you'd get at the model sooner if some of you weren't pig-headed about your own and too fond of abusing each other's asked mr radley well, certainly admitted mr buffle and that's why i wanted us to get up a bible class like the one we have if everybody will try to see what's good in his neighbor's theories and what's bad in his own his fortune uh, his religion i mean is a sure thing fiddling on one string always makes a thin sort of a tune there were a good many small tunes begun yesterday then observed squire woodhouse well said mr buffle i thought something of the kind myself but a man can't break an old habit to pieces all at once things will be different before long though there is no reason why they shouldn't said principal alleman excepting one reason that's stronger than any other you can't get to the bottom of any of the sayings of christ the prophets or the apostles without finding that they mean do right and when you reach that point what is in the man and not what is in the book comes into play or rather it always should but seldom does i suppose that's so said mr buffle soberly in and of ourselves we can do nothing remarked deacon bates it's very odd then that we should have been told to do so much replied principal alleman it was to teach us our dependence upon a higher power said deacon bates with more than his usual energy are we only to be taught and never to learn then asked principal alleman 
some of my pupils seem to think so but those who depend least upon the teacher and act more fully up to what they have been taught are the ones i call my best scholars deacon bates's lower lip pushed up its neighbor in the schoolroom the principal's theory might apply but in religion it was different or he uh, deacon bates had always been mistaken and this possibility was not to be thought of for an instant fortunately for his peace of mind the boat touched her city dock just then and from that hour until five in the afternoon when he left his store for the boat religious theories absented themselves entirely from deacon bates's mind the last meeting of the class was still the most popular subject of conversation among the members however an interest of such a degree could not help be contagious other residents of valley rest overhearing some of the chats between the members expressed a desire to listen to the discussion of the class and to all was extended a hearty welcome without regard to race colour or previous condition of religious servitude and all were invited to be doers as well as hearers so at the next session appeared ex-judge cottaway who had written a book and was a vestryman at st amos parish broker wiltshire who worshipped with the unitarians but found them rather narrow and broker wiltshire's bookkeeper who read herbert spencer and could not tell what he himself believed even if to escape the penalty of death various motives brought men from other churches including even one from father mcgarry's flock and all of them were assured that they might say whatever they chose provided only that they believed it shall we continue our consideration of last sunday's lesson asked deacon bates after the opening prayer had been offered we have some new members and should therefore have some additional views to consider let's hear everybody said captain mail if we talk as long about this verse as we'll have to talk before we reach any agreement we'll all die before we can reach the square up and down verses that are further along in this same sermon if the class has no objection to offer we will continue our study of the third verse of the fifth chapter of matthew and those who spoke on last sunday will allow the newer members and others an opportunity to make their views known as deacon bates spoke his eye rested warningly on mr jodderel i think said mr jodderel that the new members ought to know what ideas have already been presented so as to throw any new light upon them if they can the nature of the kingdom of heaven now is the most important question suggested by the lesson and it won't be of the slightest consequence to any one interrupted principal alleman unless they first comply with the condition which the verse imposes upon those who want to reach the kingdom i wouldn't be too sure of that remarked president lotson jesus said that the poor in spirit should have the kingdom of heaven he didn't say that no one else should share it with them what is written doesn't always express all that is meant it doesn't in insurance policies anyhow said squire woodhouse when my barn burned time is precious my brethren said deacon bates hastily scenting a personality i will therefore ask judge cottaway for his opinion of the passage i think said the judge with that impressive cough which is the rightful indulgence of a man who has written a volume on the rules of evidence that poor in spirit undoubtedly means unassuming rightly satisfied with what is their due mindful of the fact that human nature is so imperfect that whatever a man obtains is probably more than he deserves they cannot be the meek for special allusion is made to the meek in this same group of specially designated persons neither can it refer to people who are usually called poor-spirited persons to wit those who are too devoid of what is commonly designated as spirit for these are properly classified as peacemakers and have a similar though not identical blessing promised to them the class owes its thanks to the judge for his clear definition of the term poor in spirit said mr jodderel and if he can be equally distinct upon the expression kingdom of heaven he will put an end to a great deal of senseless blundering i know of but one definition said the judge heaven is the abode of god and the angels and those who are finally saved ah 
but where is it that's the question this class wants answered said mr jodderel twisting his body and craning his head forward as he awaited the answer really said the judge you must excuse me i don't know where it is and i can't say that study as to its locality can throw any light upon the lesson this opinion delivered by an ex-judge who had written a book on the rules of evidence would have quieted almost any one else and the members faces expressed a sense of relief as they thought that mr jodderel was not one of the faint-hearted and in his opinion faint-heartedness and quietness were one and the same thing no light upon the lesson echoed mr jodderel why what is the bible for if not to inform us of our destiny what is this world but a place of preparation for another and how can we prepare ourselves unless we know what our future place and duty is to be next exclaimed deacon bates with more than his usual energy and mr jodderel sank back into his chair and talked angrily with every feature but his mouth and with his whole body besides mr wiltshire has some new ideas to present no doubt continued the leader bracing himself somewhat firmly in his chair for the deacon naturally expected an assault from a man of mr wiltshire's peculiar views poverty of spirit seems to me to be old english for modesty said mr wiltshire we know very little comparatively of the great designs of god and about as little of the intentions of our fellow-men so we should be very careful how we question our maker or criticize our neighbors no human being would appreciate divine perfection if he saw it no man can give his fellow-men full credit for what they would do if they were angels and are sorry because they can't do i think the passage means that only by that modesty that self-repression by which alone a man can accept the inevitable as decreed by god and forbear that fault-finding which comes fully as easy as breathing can a man be fitted for the companionship of the loving company which awaits us all in the next world whereabouts asked mr jodderel half a dozen members filibustered at once and mr jodderel was temporarily suppressed after which squire woodhouse remarked well now that sounds first-rate i never knew before that unitarians had such good religion in them no harm meant you know wiltshire now let us hear from mr bungfloat said deacon bates mr bungfloat bookkeeper to mr wiltshire hopelessly explored his memory for something from herbert spencer that would bear upon the subject but finding nothing at hand he quoted some expressions from john stuart mill's essay on nature and was hopelessly demoralized when he realized that they did not bear in the remotest manner upon the topic under consideration then deacon bates announced that the subject was open for general remark and comment mr jodderel was upon his feet in an instant though the class has no rule compelling the members to rise while speaking mr leader said he everybody has spoken but nobody has settled the main question which is where is the kingdom of heaven everybody knows who the poor in spirit are any one that didn't know when we began has now a lot of first-class opinions to choose from but where and what is heaven that is what we want to know a subdued but general groan indicated the possibility that mr jodderel was mistaken as to the desires of the class meanwhile young mr banty who had been to europe and listened to much theological debate in cafes and beer gardens remarked well, i'm not a member of this respected body but i seem to be included in the chairman's invitation i profess to be a man of the world i've been around a good deal and i never could see that the poor in spirit amounted to a row of pins if they're fit for heaven they ought to be fit for something on this side of that undiscovered locality discovered millions upon millions of times bless the lord interrupted squire woodhouse well the discoverers sent no word back at any rate said young mr banty so there's one view i think ought to be considered isn't it possible that jesus was mistaken mr prim turned pale and deacon bates shivered violently while a low hum and a general shaking of heads showed the unpopularity of young mr banty's idea the class cannot entertain such a theory for an instant 
answered deacon bates as soon as he could recover his breath though it encourages the freest expression of opinion oh remarked mr banty with a derisive smile the tone in which this interjection was delivered put the class upon its spirit at once our leader means exactly what he says said mr jodderel any honest expression of opinion is welcome here if such were not the case said mr prim a rival class would not have been formed and none of us would have learned how many sides there are to a great question said mr buffle larger liberty wouldn't be possible said builder stott why i've just had to shudder once in a while but the speakers meant what they said and i rejoice that there was somewhere where they could say it i've said everything i've wanted to remarked squire woodhouse that's so exclaimed insurance president lotson i haven't seen any man put down testified captain mayle and i don't yet understand what to make of it nobody could ask a fairer show declared mr radley the utmost courtesy has been displayed toward me said uh, dr farenglotz although i am conscious that my views are somewhat at variance with those of others the nature of proof has not been as clearly understood as it should have been said young lawyer scott but no one has lacked opportunity to express his sentiments so far from fault being found with the freedom of speech said mr alleman the sentiment of the class is i think that the expression of additional individual impressions would have been cordially welcomed as they will also hereafter be young mr banty felt himself to be utterly annihilated and the pillars of the class looked more stable and enduring than ever and greatly relieved when the session ended and they could congratulate each other on the glorious spirit of liberty which had marked their collective deliberations and when squire woodhouse dashed impetuously from the room and returned to report that dr humbletop's class consisted of one solitary pupil several of the members unconsciously indulged in some hearty handshaking end of story thirty seven end of romance of california life by john haverton